Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now, in a second, we'll get to this guy on screen and tell you who he is. His story is as interesting as it is disturbing. But first of all, you might be wondering about the new setup on the channel. And essentially, this is the first in a new series of videos that I'm going to be releasing every other week, midweek, in addition to the longer form content we get at a weekend. These videos are going to look at current affairs in the conspiracy world and the world of cults, etc. And they're going to be very different to my normal longer form kind of like debunking videos. These videos really are for me to give my opinion on stories. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. And if nobody watches them and you all hate them, I'll stop doing them. But for now, let's see who this guy is. Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. Okay, so this is Steven Anderson. Now maybe you follow kind of the world of preaching or hate preaching in his case and you know who Steven Anderson is but if you haven't let's take a little look at him this video I've got lined up here is from a guy called Owen uh, Morgan I'll obviously link it in the description um thank you oh well I say thank you He's, he doesn't know I'm using his content yet but if you are watching Owen thank you for letting us use it uh and he's taken a little clip of one of Steven Anderson's sermons and we can see he's got quite a lot of people there watching him and we're about to see somebody new to the church come up and ask to pray. Nice Christian environment and a Christian guy in a Christian church is going to walk up to a Christian pastor and ask to pray. It's going to be an absolute sea of tranquility, isn't it? Hey, sit down. Sit down. What are you, what are you coming up here to do? You want, you want to come take over the service? Huh? What, what do you want? Dude's a Pentecostal visiting the church for the first time wants to give a prayer because that's what they do at his church what i just want a prayer get out of here can i get can i get a little grace no, no you can't no you, you get out of here get him out of here understand? drag this bozo out you, you... okay so uh thank you for that owen morgan i'll link your video in the description uh so that kind of gives you an idea of the type of person that uh steven anderson is the type of preacher he is you know he takes no fluff off anybody he wants to be the man in charge the man at the front and he's obviously got all his congregation kind of like in the palm of his hand there but there is one person he doesn't have in the palm of his hand not anymore at least and that is a certain matthew powell now matthew powell as you might know is quite a controversial figure himself he said an awful lot of controversial things and given the nature of the story i'm about to tell you i am trying to dial back uh, the amount of controversial things I mention, because I don't want YouTube uh, giving me uh, any more sticking and me getting in any more trouble again. But here's what Matthew Powell has recently said about Stephen Anderson. I have no association whatsoever with Stephen Anderson. He should be stepping down from the office of a bishop. He should not be pastoring. He's a contentious man. Okay, he's got no association other than the fact that Stephen Anderson introduced him to his wife. Uh, which he does say in this video, he's not hiding that. Uh, Steve Nansen introduced Matt Powell to his wife and now he seems to be turning his back on him. Why might he be turning his back on him? Is it because of some of the horrible things he says? Now, I'm going to show you one of the horrible things that um, Stephen Anderson says now. And there's a word in here that I've had to uh, mute or put a little sound effect over. The word is the name of a veg, uh, not a vegetable, a fruit beginning with G. A small G, you make wine out of it, right? Beginning with G. Think of a word that rhymes with that, beginning with R, and then you'll be able to guess what the topic is of this little clip of Steve Anderson and, uh, and what he's actually saying here, the sick, sick man. Because guess when you consented? When you said to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, you know, and it'd be like, oh, my husband me. What in the world? That, that, how can that even exist? That's stupid. OK. And you say, oh, Pastor Anderson, you're nuts. No, you're nuts. Anyone who comes up with within marriage is an idiot. Disgusting, isn't it? Absolutely disgusting. And you know what? That was that was a year over a year ago that video surfaced online and it's taken up until the last couple of days for Matt Powell to distance himself from him. And he hasn't distanced himself from him because of that video. He hasn't. So why don't we bring up, very quickly before we move on, one of Matt Powell's finer moments as well. He's had all the time in the world to disassociate himself from Stephen Anderson. And he's, he's taken up until the last couple of days to do it. Maybe that's because this is the type of person uh, Matt Powell is. This is a recording taken by somebody called Jeremy, who was in the congregation of Matt Powell's church, who turned up at the church to fix a window. Matt wasn't happy with him, so he showed him his Christian love 
um, and called him a woman who who deserved to burn in hell. Or I paraphrase. You'll hear it now. Are we gonna Number fix one. the window? No, because here, there's no parts. I thought there was parts here, Jeremy. And you're well, scared. Don't you're don't scared to death to talk to me. <laughs> you are, dude. It's not a joke. You're you're a skinny little runt baby that can't think for himself. And you come here, you constantly leech off me, then you go complain to other people, oh, Matt won't, Matt's taking advantage of me. That's the, uh, that's a well-known kind of like uh, c Christian attitude of tolerance, uh, love, turning the other cheek. Um, he's displaying that well there. Dude, you <laughs> will go to hell! I am not joking! Look at me! Matt, stop. Look at me! Stop. You look at me right now! Stop! That came here has nothing video. to do with this. I came here. We are going to talk you about this. You're smile. You are insane. You think I am yelling too hard? You have lost Stop. your mind. Stop. You're going to talk to me. No. You're going to talk to me right now. I'm getting out. You're of here. acting like a woman. Why don't you no, talk to me I'm like a man? Acting like a woman. I came yeah, here for the stupid. You're video. acting like a woman. So there we go. Jeremy was acting like a woman who's going to burn in hell. But what I wanted to know is, did Jeremy ever get the window fixed? And I have left comments on Matt Powell's YouTube channel asking, you know, did Jeremy ever fix the window? And I've never got an answer. So, you know, I guess I guess we'll find out. So, but Matt Powell. So we know the kind of guy he is. Now, so what would make somebody like Matt Powell turn on Steven Anderson? Well, it all started before this video clip you're about to see now, but... Let, let's all start here. My brother, Clint Anderson, in Greenville, South Carolina, has stolen my daughter from me. I've been to his house three different times with the sheriff. The sheriff told him that he has to let us have our daughter, that he has no custody, that he's wrong, and that he can't keep her, but he's refusing to cooperate. He's refusing to comply. So he makes a video claiming that his brother, who he showed in the picture there, has stolen his daughter off him. And obviously he's upset. You know, I've got a daughter who, who is roughly the same age. If somebody, you know, kidnapped her, got, um, you know, it, at the very least, it's going to take the shine off your weekend, isn't it? And I think obviously more than that has happened here with Stephen. He's very, very angry. In the video he posted saying that his brother had stole his daughter, 17 year old. He doxed his brother, he gave his brother's phone number out, he gave his brother's wife's phone number out, he showed pictures of his brother's children, and he encouraged people to go and keep an eye on the house. Um, I'm not going to be showing any of that for obvious reasons, but he obviously does want his daughter back. He is coming across as if he believes that his daughter has been taken, and essentially what happened was his daughter went to stay with her uncle and then has never returned, and he's interpreting that to be a kidnapping. But why... Did she never return? Well, a couple of days ago, an interview was released where she talks about being at her uncle's house and then coming off a phone conversation with her dad. Super concerned. And I went to them and I said, I was like, listen, I was like, I just got home with my dad and I was like, and I'm not going home. I was like, if I go home, I don't know what they're going to do to me, but it doesn't sound good. And in the past, like my, my brother Solomon, my dad, like has violently assaulted him. Um, and my brother Isaac, he actually said that he was going to kill my brother Isaac once. And like, was he like bashed my brother Isaac's head into the floor and then stepped on it, which is obviously very extreme. And in both situations, like the first one with my brother Solomon, my parents, like, he hadn't done anything like significant or anything. It was actually because he had like watched YouTube and The Office, if anyone's familiar with that show. So there we go. We can clearly hear from her there that she's worried about what might happen to her when she goes home. She's talking about beatings for innocent things like watching YouTube or The Office, etc. And um, we do have to bear in mind, obviously, that it's innocent till proven guilty. That one little clip of her saying something like that, even if that's how she felt at the time, doesn't necessarily mean that that was a reality in the home. But we've also got to bear in mind that she isn't the only one of Stephen Anderson's children who's come out to say something like this. The story from here really starts to unravel for Steve. There is a YouTube channel called Dead Domain, and I've linked it in the description. And the owner of that YouTube channel has interviewed three of um, Stephen's children within the past year, one of them being his daughter that we've just seen. The first person he interviewed was Isaac Anderson. And the second person was the eldest child called John Anderson. 
Now, John Anderson uh, documented or described some quite horrendous beatings and horrendous things that he saw. I'm not going to try and take views away from Dead Domain's videos by playing you those bits. And also, I'm a bit worried about what I can play without YouTube taking it down. So I'm going to link those interviews in the description, or at least the channel in the description so you can find them. But one thing I can show you is a couple of videos here from John where he is recording himself talking to a Pastor Shelley, a friend of Stephen Anderson's, and trying to rationalise with him and explain what he experienced at home. Let's have a listen to what's said here. My dad in a meeting with his church members said, I have never hit my wife. I have never physically laid hands on her which is something that is blatantly not true because I, I saw him beat her on a regular basis for years. That's something my other siblings can attest to. You can ask any of them. Now, if somebody's son is telling you that that's what they have seen while and telling you about things they've experienced while they were in the house and you are not a member of that family... There's very little you, little you can do or say to, to pretend that you have more expertise in that area and dispel what the child is saying. You either say, I believe you or I don't believe you. You don't try and follow up by trying to justify what the child is saying or, or tell them that, they, that they've misinterpreted something. You haven't got that experience to do it. Well, this is the person he was talking to, Pastor Jonathan Shelley, and we can see in this uh, argument here, that argument here, in this article here, that during this phone call, Shelley has tried to justify and explain what was going on at home when he wasn't there. He's uh, tried to use a distinction between close-fisted striking and other forms of striking, such as slapping, a distinction to try and I suppose, alleviate allegations of abuse. Now, I suppose you all want to hear that clip that that article is referring to. So here it is. According to him and talking with him, he told the church that he did not close fist punch your mom. Did he admit now, to you that he beat her with the electrical cord? Well, here's the thing. I asked him if he used physical discipline on your mom. Okay. And he said, he told me that whatever he had done between him and your mom was consensual and that it was behind closed doors, you know, and that whatever his kids were aware of or heard were probably even an exaggeration of what happened. So, and there's a number of uh, t references to, well, it wasn't a closed fist, it's not a closed fist, or was it a closed fist um, in that, that interview there, which again, you'll see those on Dead Domain's channel if you go and watch them. But one of the things I, I said I was going to give my opinion on this, and one of the things I'm interested in is how Stephen Anderson's um, congregation are going to react to this. Oh, so I've just skipped uh, past something here. This is Miriam Anderson, his, his daughter, on her Facebook actually posting out an exp a, f a more detailed explanation, I suppose, than we saw in this video here, um, talking about how, how desperate she was, how her uncle didn't steal her. She came to her uncle desperate for help. She really, um, in fact, let's just read this here. So my uncle didn't steal me. I came to my uncle desperate for help and he and his family offered me refuge. In my months of living at their house, I gained nothing but respect for my uh, aunt and uncle. Uh, they time and time again prove their wisdom and godliness, and I will forever be grateful for the love they showed me. Um, so there we go. It's sad to think that my parents knew that I was safe, doing well, and dating a godly man, godly Christian man, and ruined that. So things obviously aren't all well in the Anderson household, but how did he, how did he react to that? Well, where are we here? So he reacted to that in his congregation by trying to dispel the rumours. And instead of maybe taking the week off, he decided to blame a Satan-worshipping transvestite for talking to his children and turning their heads. This is just beyond fucking nuts. My accusers teamed up with a literal Satan-worshipping transvestite. Amen. Okay, and you know what? We could pretty much almost just close our Bibles and go home right now. Okay? 
Because anybody with a brain in their head knows that you don't go to Satan to tell the truth. You go to Satan because you want to tell lies. Okay? Just listen to those people in the background, you know, supporting him and cheering him on. And, and you know, it's got to be innocent until proven guilty. But uh, I think there's got to be a certain element of of brainwashing there to to hear about all these allegations and then cheer someone on that's talking about uh, <laughs> Satan worshipping transvestite who's at fault. I, it's still blowing my mind. There's obviously a lot more details to, to come out of this. Um, and, you know, I, I do hope. I do hope that the people in his congregation at least ask questions. Don't blindly follow, which we do see an awful lot of cults. And I would class this as being some kind of cult. I don't know if it fits the legal definition of a cult, so it's obviously all in my opinion. But I would class this to be quite cultish behaviour. The biggest test, though, was really outlined by John, his oldest son. The biggest test is, what will Stephen do? Will he double down and will he keep trying to defend these allegations by blaming Satan worshipping transvestites, for example, or will he actually at least start to acknowledge that there are some issues and put his family first, or will he put his ministry first? Let's see what John's got to say. I think that now if he wants to reconcile with me, right, he would have to apologize for publicly calling me a liar for saying those things which would then involve him admitting that he did those things which would then in a way really ruin his ministry and i think that the fact that he was willing to blatantly lie to his own congregation shows that at this point he's kind of just not wanting to let go of his ministry and that's isn't it willie willie uh if he is found guilty i suppose i've got to say that or if he if it ever goes to, it doesn't look like they're going to prosecute so i can't say that he absolutely is guilty but will will he put his ministry first or his children first and i guess we'll find we'll find out with that and um i don't know i said i said these videos will be very different to the normal long form ones this really is just me bringing to your attention a story that i found interesting and maybe it will turn into a longer form fully fleshed out where we search dot you know mini documentary or something I can put out on a weekend. But for now, this has just caught my attention. I'm interested to see what you've got to say about it. Maybe you know more about this story than I don't. If you think this new short form every other week video is a crap idea, just tell me. Uh, of course, I'll only listen to positive comments. <laughs> right, I'll see you this weekend.